Eric is live in Brooklyn. Deb, it's, it's heart-wrenching when you hear the stories from some of these folks. You're out there in the thick of things. What are people telling you? They're saying they're suffering. A lot of people that we're speaking to are saying they're suffering. Not only that, they've lost everything. So not only do they have to live with the cold and the freezing temperatures in wet, damp, mold-stricken homes, but they just don't know what the next step is. Some of these cars that you see here, one of the reasons they haven't moved is because the huge wave uh, came all the way down this block. And for just to situate everybody, on the other side of the water is Breezy Point. That's where those 110 homes burned down the night of Hurricane Sandy. That was zone A. Brooke, this is zone B. People didn't feel, people weren't told that they had to evacuate. One man said by the time he was told he had to evacuate, the water was up to his waist, up to his chest. He said there simply wasn't any time, and they lost all electricity. They say they've seen a couple of people from FEMA, but not enough to make a difference. And also some folks from the Red Cross who have come to help, but they say what they need is they really need manpower, and right now they don't feel like they're getting it. And Christine Holland is joining me right now. I want to ask you, you've been coordinating the effort here at the Relief Center. If you just take a look by the way, Brooke, that relief center there. Okay, if it weren't for the relief center, a lot of people would have given hope a long time ago. Christine, what are some of the things that you're, you need? Uh, the main thing is we need heat and electricity. We really need Con Ed to come down and organize and let people know, um, show more Con Ed presence, uh, and also National Grid um, needs to come down and show their presence so that people will understand better what to do about getting the electricity fixed. We really need volunteer licensed electricians, licensed plumbers. Um, Boilers, we need boilers to come in, we need supplies to come in for all that. We need a professional tree cutters very badly. We have trees ready to fall on top of houses. Um, I know four so far, and I can't get help for that. Um, firemen can only cut the front of the door, but we need professionals. Um, there's a lot. There's a, do you feel that Garrison Beach has been, has been ignored, that other areas have gotten help faster? I haven't seen any news. Because you I know that your city. No, you're not really sure. I'm not sure. I'm not right. sure on that. But you know what your community needs. Um, yes. Is it frustrating to you that you haven't seen more people from Con Ed here who, who are handling this? Because now they're saying, well, you have to get the licensed electrician to, to sign off and make sure your break is okay to begin with before we can even turn them back on. Yeah, it would be great to see some more Con Ed Edison representatives just talking to the people and making them feel more comfortable with what's going on. Tonight there is a town hall meeting. We'll see if Con Ed shows up or not. National Grid, I've seen a couple of, of more trucks than yes, I did before. Grid, true. Me too. Um, are, they, are they starting to come to this area? I've just seen the trucks trickling through. I'm in the old section of Garrison Beach. I don't know about the new section. Right. Like I said, I, I'm, I, my internet's not working. I can't get um, much connection on my phone, so it's been difficult to really get communication. And last question, um, at the firehouse, at the relief center, <laughs> we heard that there were a lot of people last night, and a lot of people were crying. They're just hanging on by a thread right now. We really need counselors to help with trauma. I've heard of people that haven't left their house yet because they're terrified to leave their homes. Yeah. So we're dealing with trauma issues, and we really could use some volunteers, Red Cross, whoever can come help with those issues. All right, Christine Holland, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's not just the obvious things, but they even need grief counselors, psychological counselors, yeah. to help them walk them through this because they've lost so much, Brooke. Deb Farrick, there are no words, I think, to really describe what so many of these people are going through. I appreciate you. I appreciate the woman who's trying to help people out. I know the frustration is palpable there.